Hi everyone, welcome to another Tech Nerd tutorial. Today we're going to discuss a frequently asked question, which is how to share Google Apps and files with large groups of users. In Google Drive, we have the ability to share Google Docs and other uploaded files to other users. We hit the share button and then we start adding people's email address. This can be quite tedious if we have a lot of different email recipients. So here, even sped along, it takes quite a few seconds to add just nine different users to this particular document. Hit the send and now this is shared with all nine users. However, if I want to make any additional changes, so maybe I want to change their edit privileges to only view only privileges, I once again have to go into advanced settings and now individually have to change every single permission for every user to can view and save. So very tedious, and if it is something that's 10 or less, it is manageable, but once you're getting to 20s, 30s, 50s, 100 users, this can take a very long time. So there's a, first a method that is quite simple to do that uses the contact groups of Gmail. So in the apps launcher, there's contacts. If you don't have that, you can open a new tab and just type in contacts.google.com. That's gonna take you to the contacts page where there's groups, you can create a new group. So when I go ahead and click on the new group, it's gonna ask for me to name it. I'm just gonna name it TNS users. And then from there, you can start adding contacts to this particular group. Your screen may look a little different just because this is the newer interface, but basically the principle is the same. I add each individual user, so now I'm going to have to add the exact same nine users again to this particular contact group. With this contact group, once everyone is added, then I can go all the way back to my Google Drive file and I can find this group by its title. So TNS users will now appear. I'm going to go ahead, go back to this file, go back into its sharing, and first I'm going to delete all the different share settings of the users to begin with. So now it's completely blank, it's just myself. I want to refresh Google Drive because it does need to first update with the changes I made in Google Contacts, and now I can click the share button, and then now when I add emails, if I just start typing in TNS users, I'm going to get the group that says nine contacts. Click the group, all the different users appear, and I can just now hit send. So this is a very fast way to just group users together and then send. There is a maximum of 200 users per group. And the issue with these contact groups is it's still individual users. So if I needed to change things like all the users to view, I have to do it individually all over again. So while this solution may work with some people, it may not work with everyone. So that's where there's another Google app that I can use that manages contacts in larger groups. These groups can be more than 200, and these are called Google groups, as opposed to the contact groups in the contacts app. So here I'm just going to go ahead and close Google contacts. In the app launcher, there is a groups, and if you don't see that here or in the more section, you can always go ahead and open up a tab and just type in groups.google.com. This is going to take us to the Google Groups app, and here what I want to do is create a group here in Google Groups. When I create the group, the difference here is despite giving it a name, which is the same as the contact groups, it is also going to generate a unique email address for this group. And I can start using this email address as part of the sharing. So here I just type in TNS users editors, and it's going to go ahead and give me an email address, which I can technically still customize and then I can even give it a group description. So here I'm just saying everyone who is part of this group will be able to edit the files that are shared with this particular group. There are a few other things with the Google Groups. You can choose a language, but also you can choose a group type. Now, we are gonna stick with the default email list, but you can have other forms, which is also a component of Google Groups, which we aren't going to cover in this workshop, but you can definitely explore, and who knows, maybe in the future we'll have one that goes through things like the views, the posts. The only other option I do wanna mention is joining the group. You may wanna specify it to only invited users so that it's not a lot of people requesting access unless you want that feature. Because I'm using a public Gmail account, it will ask for me to verify I'm not a robot, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And now this particular group is created. 
So there it gives me some help information. I'm going to skip that. It also asks me to update my profile, which I can, and then save changes, or I can just use the default. And here now in the group manager, I can see the members by clicking the members in the top right. So it's just me. There's also manage. When I click manage, then I can start adding and inviting users. I want to directly add members. And here, this is the last time, but I'll have to add everybody's email once again to this particular option. You will notice that I'm not using the group. And the reason is because if I use that, the formatting would be incorrect for this box. Go figure. You need to put a welcome message. And then I do suggest that you change the email subscription options to no email before hitting the add, just so that people aren't getting email notifications of everything that goes on. Then I go ahead and hit continue after I verify that I'm not a robot. And then it says that I've added those people they will get an email notification saying that they have been added to this particular group. Once that's done, now I can go back to the Google Drive uh, share settings and I can just add the email address that's in the settings. So the TNS users editors at googlegroups.com. And that's going to just be the one email address that will then include everyone part of that group. So in this sharing, once again, I'm going to go to advanced and I'm just going to Go ahead and delete everyone again. And this time I'm just going to add the Google group email address. So TNS hyphen users hyphen editors at googlegroups.com. I'm just going to double check that this is correct. So I'm going to go back, see that this is all correct. You can copy and paste it in sections as well. I'm going to say they can edit and then I'll go ahead and hit send. So once that's sent, now everyone part of that group is going to have edit access. So now I'm not managing who's part of this group here in Google Drive. I do that in the Google Groups app. So now that that's particularly added, I can go to one of those group members, TNS user 02, go into the shared with me section, and I will see this particular file. If I go ahead and open this file because I'm part of that group, and remember only the group has this file shared with it, I will have edit privileges to come in here and to now type some changes. So I just type the word changes. This now allows me to manage many people with just a single email address. So that if say I want to revoke editing to the entire group and instead give them just viewing access, I can still go to advanced, but now I just need to change the group to can view hit my save changes, hit done. And when I go back to TNS user 02, I can open up this particular document and now the permissions has changed so that it is view only. This will be every one part of this particular group and these groups can have hundreds of users in them. So go ahead, close that. One thing with these particular groups, I do recommend doing some planning with it. You do notice I did title it editors, so it only makes sense that these users should be able to edit. This then means that I can create different groups that have different permissions that they are designed for. So if I go back to Google Groups, I can go ahead and go back to my groups in the left sidebar and create a new group. And this new group that I'd want to make could be for another permission level. So I go ahead, click the create group, and then this particular one I can title for commentators or commenters. So go ahead, type all that in. It's going to once again give a unique email address and I can go ahead and give a description for this particular group that users are only going to be able to comment, not edit this particular document. And then from there, scroll down, change the join this group once again to only invite users and then hit the create at the very top. Proving once again that I'm not in fact a robot, but a real person and then hitting continue. And then I have my new Google group that I can use and then add users to. So in this particular situation, I'm, I'm just going to add TNS user 02 to this particular group. And then we can see how we can use these different groups to manage individual users. So now that I'm adding TNS user 02, I'm just once again going to write a welcome message. that will be part of the email that TNS user 02 will receive. And then changing the email subscription options to no email and then hitting the add button. Once all that's done, then I once again have to prove that I'm not a robot. And they, these verifications only matter if it's not a Google Apps for Work or Google Apps for Education. Once all that's done, 
and I now have TNS user 02 part of the commentators, I go back to the sample Google Docs. I'm going to once again add now the new group. So TNS users now commenters at googlegroups.com. And then now I'm going to have two different groups. So once again, I'm just going to double check that I'm getting the email address correct, TNS user commenters at, at googlegroups.com. Hit the send. Make sure that they're at can comment. And then now I'm going to have two different groups. So TNS user is part of the Google groups for the commenters as well as the editors. And they're both now here, one with editing privileges and the other respectively with the commenting privileges. So now if I go back to TNS user 02, if I double click the file, I am still going to have editing privileges, even though I add them to the commentators one. So once again, we just want to remember that being part of a higher group with higher privileges is going to overrate the lower one. If you want to uh, learn more about that, there's going to be an annotation on the screen. So because of the fact that the TNS user 02 is in both groups, that the editing one will win. So what I can do is I can go back to the Google Groups for the editors and in the editors group remove TNS user 02 from that particular group. Once again going to members I can see that TNS user 02 is there. So to remove it I can just go to manage, check off TNS user 02 and under the actions I can remove from the group. Remove TNS user 02. Oddly it'll still be there but if I refresh the screen that particular row will disappear and TNS user 02 is actually removed. So when I go back to TNS user 02 and refresh TNS user 02's screen, they will only have the suggesting and commenting ability on this particular document because TNS user 02 is part of the commenting group and not the editing group anymore. So with this, then the other group that I probably add is going to be the viewers group. And then in the Google Groups application, I can choose what group users are going to be in and move them from one group to the other without always having to come to the share settings in order to do it individually. If I have these in different folders and different files, and I just do it in the Google group itself, and I don't have to worry about doing it in every individual spot. So the other thing I want to mention is that this is applicable in other places like Google Calendar. So if I have Google Calendars that I want to share with groups, so maybe my default calendar I want to share, then I can still in the share this calendar section, put the email address for the Google group. So once again, I'm going to put in TNS user, the commentators group, and here maybe they only get to see all event details. And then I can give TNS users the editors group and they will be able to actually make changes to the calendar itself. So it's just another way that I can use these Google groups. They work in Google Drive, in Google Calendar, and Google Sites. Basically any Google app that has sharing, you can use these particular groups. The other thing I want to show is for Google Apps for Work and Apps for Education, the domain is going to be specific to that domain. So here we see the default googlegroups.com. But here in a domain specific one, we have the domain as the actual fragment of the email address. Everything else is basically the same, but in Google Apps for Work and Apps for Education, the admin have the ability to prevent other external users from using the group, from emailing the group. You can have some more functionality, like you can't actually add external users to a Google group in a domain specific Google group. So those things are settable by the Google admin of those respective domains. So with these new tips, I hope that sharing files and calendars and other Google apps to large groups of people will now be easier using these Google groups. Hi everyone, thanks again for watching this video. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any additional questions or comments. Furthermore, check out some of our related videos or find us in our social media. If you would like email notifications of whenever we release new video or written tutorials, you can go to our webpage technerdservices.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. We will send to your inbox notifications of those new video and tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, keep teching on.